Good afternoon, good morning, good evening to everybody who's joining us today. My name is Kobe Brandt. I'm the Regional Director of ICLE Africa, and I'm very, very pleased to share with you the opening and welcoming words to this webinar today, which is part of a series of webinars that our office is conducting every Tuesday afternoon exactly on this time. So please do tune in to the others as well. And today again is bringing us um, a culmination of actors, partners, and also uh, around a very interesting topic, very important and pertinent topic about the localization and the necessity to localize the sustainable development goals, not only in South Africa, but also uh, worldwide. We're going to look at so the South African lessons we've learned so far in the localization of the SDGs here in our own home country, but we'll also be reflecting about many other learnings from across the African continent and even indeed globally. So we're doing this in partnership with our program Urban Leads, um, low emissions uh, development um, program and strategies, uh, which is a partnership between UN Habitat, ICLE and the European Commission. Uh, um, and uh, includes some 68 cities around the world, and Rise Africa, our initiative that focuses on the future urban world and our future cities in Africa. So with these opening words, a very warm welcome to all of you, and I'm looking forward to joining you in the next hour and a half. Very, very exciting lineup. I'm handing over to our moderator, my colleague, Timothy Blatch. Thank you, Timothy. Great. Thank you so much to Kobe for opening um, and officially uh, setting us, uh, giving us the green light to go ahead. So it's my pleasure to be moderating this webinar today um, and to be joining you. And I want to just reiterate the welcoming remarks of Kobe um, and, and just welcome everybody who's joining us. Uh, my name is Timothy Blatch. I'm a professional officer in urban development and nature-based solutions with ICLE Africa. Um, and it's really my pleasure to welcome you to the first in a two-part series of webinars looking at localizing the SDGs. Um, as Kobe has said, both of the webinars in this small series form part of the Roadmap to Rise Africa in 20, 2021, and we will share um, some more details on that shortly. Uh, before we begin, I'd just like to remind you of our webinar protocols. The webinar will be recorded, and therefore, by participating, you are consenting to be recorded. Um, and we, when we enter periods of discussion, we hope that you will all eagerly use and raise uh, the raise your hand option in Zoom. Uh, when, and when called upon, you are free to unmute yourself um, and you are also free to share your video with us um, when asking a question in these periods of question and discussion. Uh, you can do this in the uh, panel on your right. Um, and we also welcome fervent discussion in our chat boxes and for you to add questions throughout the webinar. Um, in relation to various presentations or addressed to specific speakers. And we ask that you use the Q&A box um, on the bottom of your screen to do that. Uh, the value of this box is that you can like other people's questions as well, and this will bring them to the top, um, making them more likely to be answered. Um, but what we will be doing is we will be uh, drawing on each of the speakers who will be also answering questions in the Q&A box um, throughout the webinar itself. So it's really my pleasure to moderate this session. We've got a very exciting lineup of speakers. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, our chair is, is Ms. Kobe Brandt, the Regional Director of ICLE Africa. I've introduced myself as moderator, um, and I'm gonna very briefly skim through the speakers in the order you will see them. We have uh, Ms. Nachi Majue from ICLE Africa. Uh, Dr. Masi Teng from the Department of uh, Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation. Um, Ms. Natasha Primer from the City of Cape Town. Mr. Pravendra Kia from Itaquini Municipality. Uh, Ms. Sharon Gavinder um, from the City of Umtlatuzi. Um, and last but not least, Ms. Sylvia Krauser, Dr. Sylvia Krauser. Um, and I will introduce each of our speakers in a bit more detail just before each of them speaks. So, if we can go to the next slide. To encourage engagement in this webinar, we are going to have a series of live polls uh, where you as uh, attendees are welcome to participate. Um, and we will just ask a series of questions and the, um, the respons possible responses will come up on your screen. And we ask that you participate in these and we will share the results. So 
The first poll we want to look at is just very simply, do you deal with the SDGs in your work? Um, and if I can ask Sonia to bring up the poll, um, we uh, kindly welcome and encourage everyone to please vote now. I can already see the numbers. Um, very few are saying not really or not at all. Um, and the majority of respondents are, are saying yes, very directly and yes to some extent. So um, it's very, it's useful to, to know this information um, and, and it's really exciting to see that everyone has some uh, background knowledge on the SDGs and we are hoping to share more insights that will hopefully inspire you um, and inspire cities, not only in Africa, but uh, around the world. So um, thanks to Sonia, if we can uh, just show those results very briefly. Um, and you can all see the results now. Um, majority of respond respondents, 53% saying that they deal with the SDGs very directly, um, which is encouraging. Um, this is the, the main topic of our webinar today. Um, and without further ado, we're gonna get uh, get right into the program. So if we can have the next slide, please, Sonia. Um, so it's really my pleasure to have uh, the, the lineup of speakers we do today, um, each of whom we have had the pleasure of working with um, at ICLI Africa in, shape, in some shape or form, and uh, each of whom have really rich um, experiences and insights um, to share with us. So, just very briefly, the webinar will be divided into three segments, in a sense, um, and each segment will ha have two of our speakers. Uh, thereafter, we will have a question and discussion period um, between each of the segments. Um, without further ado, I'd really like to introduce you to Ms. Nachi Majwe um, from ECLI Africa. Nachi is the Manager of Strategic Alliances and a Senior Professional Officer in our Climate Change, Energy and Resilience Workstream. Um, at ECLI Africa. So Nachi, thank you for being with us today and uh, it's my pleasure to hand over to you and the floor is yours. Great, thank you Tim and good day to all the participants. So I will be taking you through a brief introduction on the SDGs and particularly zooming into the work that ECLI Africa has been doing in the development of a framework and roadmap for the localization of the SDGs. And um, when we're looking at the, in terms of what the SDGs are and what they mean in, um, in the next slide, it's encouraging to see that quite a lot of people that are on this call are very familiar. So um, since 2015, all the UN member states ratified um, a new global agenda, which is Agenda 2030, which really is groundbreaking. Um, for ensuring that there is a global footprint in order to achieve a better and, and more sustainable future for planet and people. So there are 17 sustainable development goals um, and they're associated with 169 targets and 230 indicators. And these are then meant to be um, achieved and reached by the year 2030. And so what is central to the sustainable development goals is that they're universal they're integrated and they seek to be transformative. And as you'll see on the next slide, these three aspects, um, when it comes to them being universal, means that they have to be achieved by all the, the countries that have signed up to them. And all of them are integrated and they're equally important. So each SDG in itself is important. Um, and that they're, they're all interrelated or interconnected. Um, for example, if you achieve if you achieve one SDG, it will then lead to a ripple effect of a number of SDGs. For example, with SDG nine on on um, inclusive infrastructure development, and say we have energy, for example, it can then assist with meeting other SDGs such as the the delivery and improvement of of education and health services, um, climate action. If we're looking at renewable energy, um, and certainly SDG seven to ensuring that people have access to um, to affordable energy. So this is just an example to show that um, meeting one SDG has so many positive and ripple effects. And also to mention that COVID-19 in particular has made the SDGs even more important and has really had an impact on, on all of them. And so the SDGs really are 
central and very important to the work that um, we all do in, in our respective fields as communities, um, as, as even just um, workers in, in government or, or local governments. So I'll then move on to the next slide to really emphasize the fact that the SDGs, although these are set globally and agreed to by national governments, local government has a very, very important role to play. Everything that happens um, has to find its, its, its space within a local government authority. So local government really is key to achieving the sustainable development goals. And it's exciting today that we have a number of municipalities that will be sharing their experiences. And this is linked to the next slide, which shows that there really is no one size fits all when it comes to the sustainable development goals. So it is up to you as a local authority or municipality six or a city to look at your entry point and how you can then link the SDGs to the work that you're already doing across your service delivery mandates. So it really is about making sure that they are then um, contextualized. And this is obviously um, linked to the fact that the SDGs come into an environment that is very complex. If we look at the next slide that shows that our, our current system is, is facing quite a number of, of challenges. Um, there's a lot of reporting that municipalities already have to do, dealing with, with clean audits, um, and making sure that services are delivered on time, they interface with lots of stakeholders. So the SDGs are meant to complement or even improve pre-existing systems and processes that are in place and not necessarily meant to add on um, a, a burden. And this then leads me to talk about um, the myths around the SDGs. So when we talk about debunking um, the, the SDGs to say that, as you can see on, on the next slide, it's important to understand that we do not implement the SDGs, but we rather implement programs to be able to achieve them. So there has been a lot of myths that the SDGs are onerous and they're introducing new things. And this is not the case. As I mentioned, they're really complementing what you are already doing. So if we can then move on to the next slide, which shows um, what the SDGs in fact are about. Um, the SDG in, in summary really are about providing a framework that is useful for the implementation of sustainable development. So they're not anything new. Um, municipalities have already been addressing multiple of these SDGs, but what they add on or what the added value of the SDGs is that they provide a standardized framework and provides municipalities with the opportunity to be able then to benchmark with other municipalities other, and other countries so that then globally there is a common agenda which has been which has so um when moving off of local government and contextualizing the sdgs it is very important um, that the, the SDGs are localized. So this means contextualizing them, aligning them to your existing plans, to your objectives, to the IDP, the SDF, and other legislative um, policies and, and processes that, that you have, and doing so in a participatory manner. Um, the SDGs require this, the same way as, um, as, as municipalities are required to include public participation in the work that they do. So I'll just spend the last part of the presentation talking about the localization framework um, and roadmap which ICLE Africa has developed. And as you can see on the next slide that ICLE Africa has been very busy on this SDG localization journey and um, starting with, with the scoping and localization research that we did and we've worked with a number of, of partners along the way. And it has then culminated to the development of framework and roadmap for the localization of SDGs, which municipalities can, um, can access and ICSI can provide them with support of how they can truly localize the SDGs within their local context. And one of the, the milestones, um, in addition to the, to the development of the framework and the roadmap is that we convened an SDG symposium together with our partners, um, COCTA, Department of Cooperative Governance, as well as SALGA, um, hosted by Etikwini, as well as MILE. 
and this was really um, an excellent start to ensuring that we can then begin to localize and have attention in terms of what the role of local government is in the localization of the SDGs. And just to quickly touch on, um, on the next slide, the two components of this localization framework that we have developed, it focuses on two main aspects, the one being localization and mainstreaming, and then the second part being measuring and reporting. And both of them really are a process that starts at a local and goes to a global level and feeds right back. So all the different levels of government are particularly important in ensuring that the SDGs are mainstreamed into the IDP, for example, the National Development Plan, and that municipalities can then report and be able to measure their contribution to the SDGs um, through, through reporting um, on the targets and the indicators. So on the next slide, which I'm going to skip because there are municipalities on the call and they will be sharing how they've been able to, to mainstream. So we can then move on to the next one on the roadmap for localizing. So Italy has developed this really easy to use um, roadmap, which we really are not seeking for one size fits all or for a linear process, but to just emphasize that really it is possible and relatively easy um, for municipalities to be able to localize the SDGs using this framework which focuses on four key steps and these documents will also be made available um, in, in the chat. So when localizing the SDGs there is no um, starting point that will be the same exactly the same for municipalities it's about where you are so start where you are and integrate the SDG localization process into existing processes. And that then relates to, for example, um, as you can see on the list, next slide, that the roadmap also then assists you with how you can link your IDP goals and objectives to certain SDGs. So we have um, a very clear roadmap and framework that helps you to be able to plot exactly which SDGs your, um, your IDP objectives meet and how you're able to measure that and be able to then report. So um, as I reach towards the end of my presentation, it's very important to emphasize that the SDGs cannot be achieved by just one institution. So it's not local government alone that can do it or national. It requires a whole of society approach. And one of the speakers will be also touching on this in a bit more detail. So um, as a parting shot, um, there are three main tips that I'd like to share from Italy Africa. So we call them our trusted, trusted tips. So the first one is, and I said this quite a few times, there is no one size fits all. So there isn't a blueprint that you as a municipality are required to fit into, but you can make use of the framework and the roadmap as a guide, um, which Italy has, has developed. And we can then be able to help you as part of this process in terms of how you can then be able to localize the SDGs. The second aspect is keep doing what you're doing and doing it well. Municipalities are already doing so much. You are able to measure, you are able to track the SDGs directly linked to what you're doing as part of the IDP, as well as your, your service delivery projects and programs. And third, related to the whole of society approach, is that as far as possible, make sure you create strategic alliances in order to be able to foster operation. So it has to be um, a full effort from all aspects of society. And lastly, um, and very important is that people are at the heart of the SDGs. And this is my, my, my last slide. So just to say that in everything that we do around the SDGs, it's not about ticking boxes. It's not about just making submissions on whether we've met the SDGs or not, or just about tracking, but it's more about people being at the heart of, of the SDGs. And this requires commitment from the community, from private sector, from you, from me, from all of us really in order to ensure that we are able to achieve um, the SDGs. And that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Great. A huge thank you to you, Nachi, for setting the scene so, so perfectly for us today. Um, I deliberately didn't mention in my opening um, that we'd be focusing on the importance of, of local governments and localization because I knew how well you were going to set the scene. So thank you for that and thank you for really bringing home the critical point of how, how, how important local governments are in the localization process. 
Um, and one of your other points around multi-level governance um, also showed how important other levels of government are. And we are really grateful to be joined by Dr. Masi Teng. Um, she is the Deputy Secretary for the National Planning uh, in the Department of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation here in South Africa uh, at the national level. Um, and it's my pleasure to welcome her. Um, and, and without further ado, I will hand over to Dr. Masi Teng to take the floor um, and lead us through a presentation of some of the work of national government and how they are, are supporting the localization process through the voluntary national review. So Dr. Masi Teng, thank you for being with us and over to you. Good afternoon, Tim, and good afternoon to the panelists and to the participants. It is a pleasure to be here um, just to share the lessons and take stock of the SDGs and the work that we have done, particularly based on the national voluntary uh, framework that we did in 2019. We do meet at a time when the world is confronted by the COVID-19, making the achievement of the 17 SDGs that Nachi has just spoken about even more challenging. And the recovery that is being set towards and after the pandemic will do represent or give us an opportunity as South Africans to urgently transform and, ex and act as fast as we can uh, to a more equitable and sustainable pathways and towards localization of the SDGs. The pandemic also, uh, in terms of the relief actions, will also create deep cuts and impact into the existing programs, the budgets, the, the, the interventions and all the work that has been done, undermining all the continuity and progress that we have seen in sustainable development before. Therefore, the country needs to use the opportunity to link existing programs and sustainability ambitions of the sustainable development goals with the pandemic's relief and the first response. It should be able to mitigate the existing and emerging challenges. I thought I should start with this part of COVID before touching on what we have been uh, doing and what we have been asked to do because of its presentation of the risks and the opportunities. Going forward, my presentation just takes stock of the SDGs in South Africa. And I would always say that all development agendas provide a shared development vision for all stakeholders within the country, in the region and continentally. As we move on, the measurement of development in South Africa is embedded or founded in the implementation of the National Development Plan, but those targets, those objectives, those indicators that we measure towards a prosperous and equal society in South Africa dealing with the three challenges of poverty, inequality, and unemployment are also embedded in the SDGs and all the other plans, including the IDPs and the provincial development goals. Looking at the process that we have undertaken for domestication and what it means for South Africa. Our belief is that to drive localization or domestication is a plan that comprises of four elements. We should be clearly aligned, encouraging all stakeholders, making sure that there's reference to SDGs, National Development Plan, and the AU Agenda 2063, and making sure that we do those in our strategies, in our plans, and we publicly cite and say that these are the ambitions, the aspirations, the targets and the goals and the objectives within all the work, the activities and the projects that we do. We should collaborate more now than even before, making sure that we map the efforts of different stakeholders. We create platforms of sharing, learning and networking identifying tools for measurement and, mecha and mechanisms that should be able to create space for better coordination and better development across society. We should also look at issues of advocacy and establishment of public and awareness campaigns, get tools that should be able to have better understanding on application of SDGs alongside our own NDP alongside our PGDSs as well as alongside our IDPs at local level. 
And we should have a virtual cloud based on collaboration and making sure that there's regular communication, learning from one another and sharing of the best practices. The major part that will show our successes and how far we have come and how well we are doing is to have a proper reporting framework that tracks progress in implementation of all the goals, objectives and targets. And there should be open and inclusive and participatory process that ensures transparency in, in, in reporting. Next slide speaks to how we look at this as the ambitions, as aspirations, as dreams at a country level. We look at the National Development Plan, which is our vision to 2030 to fight poverty, inequality, and unemployment. But at the continental level, we have the Agenda 2063, the Africa we want, looking at a prosperous Africa based on inclusive growth and sustainable development. And further, at a global level, we look at SDGs to end poverty, protect the planet, and ensure prosperity for all. And this just shows the mutually reinforcing agendas and looking at how each one of them do um, focus on making sure that there is prosperous and equality. Looking at the Agenda 2063 that looks at Africa that we want and how we get there. Looking at the alignment of SDGs and NDP, three points that we make is that the NDP version 2030 is our future that we want to, to get to as South Africans and was adopted in 2012 and was rallied behind by all South Africans when it was adopted. It predated the adoption of the SDGs. As we all know, they were adopted in 2015 and even the agenda 2063 came before the SDGs because it was adopted in 2013. So we do see the alignment and the involvement of our work in all this. And we have also seen that there's about 74% convergence between the SDGs and the priorities of job creation and elimination of poverty as we see them in the NDP 2030. The next slide shows the alignment of SDGs and NDP just as an example that in the NDP we have chapter 11 that speaks to social protection and aligned to goal one and three. Chapter nine that speaks to improving education and training and innovation speaks to goal four that talks to equitable quality education. Chapter 10 of the NDP is aligned to ending hunger which is goal two and making sure that there is healthy lives, that is goal three. Chapter three of the NDP is aligned to goal eight of the SDGs, promoting sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth. And lastly, another example is integrated and inclusive rural, rural economy, chapter six in the NDP, which is also aligned to goal, to goal two, of the SDGs as well as goal 12 that talks to sustainable consumption and production patterns. Looking at how we have um, worked to coordinate the work, we have an institutional co coordinating mechanism that has begun to be operationalized in our country. And the framework is based on making sure that we have a multi-stakeholder approach. And the coordinating mechanism provides an opportunity for the country to develop a proper implementation strategy. And it also talks to enhancement of monitoring and evaluation in relation to the implementation of SDGs. And we also recognize the need for South Africa to create a greater awareness of the SDGs, especially at lower levels where implementation and the changes in the livelihoods of the people can be seen. And the aim of the model or mechanism is to help the country in its effort to coordinate and integrate and if bring everyone to the fore and a call to action towards implementation of SDGs. That is just a pictorial um, of the institutionalized uh, coordinating mechanism that has the presidential coordinating council that is made up of all premiers 
and SALCA and the National Sustainable Development Stakeholder Forum is where all of us should be soon to be participating and making sure that all the programs and everything that happens in development is discussed and conversed and therefore all those can come in through sectoral groups and can be able to be uh, filtered further into government up to cabinet. Moving to the next steps, the lessons that we have really seen when we submitted our VNR in 2019 was that the VNR analyzed South Africa's developmental progress in, in, in the SDGs and showed the policy and historical circumstances that have shaped the progress. The analysis was heavily uh, rooted in the implementation or aligned to looking at the NDP, which is also very consistent with the SDGs as we have seen. Key principle that we followed in putting together the VNR was inclusion of all stakeholders nationally and based on making sure that we left no one behind and the sectors were consulted. The process also worked together with civil society, inputs from government and inputs from the academia as well as the private sector. The work that we also did was dependent and really provided and got a lot of support from the work that we got from the SA that had already analyzed and collated a number of reports and a number of thematic uh, data that we used just to finalize the report. Advanced planning and preparation is critical in the VNR process. I'm saying this as we move into the thinking of the roadmap towards 2021, which would be our next VNR. And effective implementation of measures to achieve SDGs required partnerships among stakeholders. More efforts and, co and collaboration are needed to deal with the challenges identified in the current VNR or 20, 2019 VNR and more contribution and collaboration with local government in producing VNR would be critical as we move on. I think the, the next slide in conclusion continue is, is that as the country, we continue to be committed to the achievement of the goals set in the SDGs and Agenda 2063 through the implementation of the National Development Plan. And going forward, I am sure we will ensure that the process called the DDM at local level will be the focus. Therefore, submitting periodic updates and reports at national implementation will continue to be important. The national implementation mostly happens at local level. Hence, we should be able to align all the plans starting from the bottom and aligning them all upwards. Moreover, the SDGs awareness at local level is required for, impl for implementation that is targeted and effective and local government will have to play a key role in the production and writing up of the next VNR as we move into 2021. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Masi Ting, for being with us today and for sharing your very critical insights on, the, on South Africa and the VNR process. If I can move to the next slide. Um, we're going to open the floor very briefly for some questions and discussions. And um, I'm, I'm noting already, Dr. Masi Ting, if I can call on you, there's a question from Lorraine in the Q&A. Um, is there a report on South Africa's progress on achieving the SDGs that is available to the public? I wonder if you would be able to respond to that briefly, Dr. Masi Ting. Uh the latest report we have currently is the VNR 2019 that we can uh, find on the website of the National Planning uh, Commission, but we can also see it in the website of the UN where all the VNRs were deposited in 2019. We are currently working on the next uh, report that would be finalized in 2021. Thank you. Great. Um, and Dr. Masi Teng, again for you, um, there's a question around um, alignment with the, the IUDF um, in South Africa. 
um, you know, to what extent uh, is, is the work being done at the national level? Um, is the integrated urban development framework considered at all in South Africa to align with the SDGs and the NDP? I think the, the, the conceptual framework starts with the alignment of IUDF with the NDP. And as I say, implementation of SDGs has got its successes founded in implementing the NDP. The issue around IUDF was conceptualized from the National Planning Commission and working with the, 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 the department COCTA has made sure that there is alignment and making sure that there is local economic development that is aligned and uh, premised in making sure that its successes in terms of development at local, uh, at local level is able to attain the broader objectives especially in, in making sure that we have cities that are viable ability for us as the country to see where we can be able to invest, especially at local levels and building the cities that will be able to change the livelihoods of the people. Therefore, there is alignment from the, the, the IUDF, with the implementation of the NDP, the implementation of NSDP, which is the National Special Development plan or framework and ultimately to get to the same viability and the same attainment of the goals of development that are sustainable in the country. Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Masiteng. I see that there's some really active conversation in the chat box and in the Q&A. Um, I would like us to move on, but I encourage all of our speakers um, to, to start responding to some of the questions in the Q&A. And thank you to all our attendees for your great conversation and, and wonderful questions. Let's keep it going. Um, can I have the next slide, please, Sonia? We are going to run another live poll quickly. Um, and we want to, Dr. Masi Ting was talking about the, the voluntary national review. And we're aware that we have a global audience on the line. And we'd like to know um, if you can launch the poll, Sonia, to what extent have you been involved in your country's voluntary national review before? Um, so uh, the poll is on your screen and uh, we encourage you to vote now. I will just give it a few seconds before we publish the results. Okay, I think we can we can publish the results. They should show on everyone's screen. Um, the majority of respondents saying they have not contributed yet, but would like to in the future, which is fantastic. Um, a few respondents who have made contributions and quite a few, 16%, who have been very involved in the process. Um, a, few, a few attendees know nothing about the BNR, which is, is also exciting because um, this is really the place to be then. Um, to hear of all these insights and ways in which you can get involved. Um, and with that, I'd like to move to the next slide where I will introduce our, our next segment of the webinar. Um, and uh, it's really my pleasure to now um, turn to focus on some of the local municipalities in South Africa who have uh, been trailblazing in a sense, this very important localization work. And I see there were some questions in the chat box about voluntary local reviews. Uh, and I hope that these questions will be answered with the next few presentations. And with that, I'd really, it's my pleasure to welcome Ms. Natasha Primer from the city of Cape Town. She is the head of policy and research, strategic development, information and GIS um, in the strategy and planning directorate at the city. Uh, Natasha, it's wonderful to have you with us. We are so privileged to have you on the line and I will hand over to you, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tim, um, and um, thank you for the invitation. I'm very pleased to be part of this conversation, um, given all the challenges that we have in, uh, and the excite, I mean, ex exciting opportunities going forward in, in developing the VLRs and contributing to, to the national VNRs. So I'm with the city of Cape Town, and maybe if I can just um, edit my title, a little bit. Um, I'm head of organizational research within the policy and strategy department. 
Um, so among so really responsible for a lot of research related processes within the city, but also very involved in uh, indicator uh, and SDG work particularly. So I'll just um, actually I wanted to just put on my timer so I don't go over time. Um, so what I will cover just very very quickly um, is um, just some of the achievements, some of the activities to date. Um, what work, um, why the VLRs are important for the city of Cape Town, and then just uh, the approach that we've decided on and in the process of, of developing and unfolding, um, and then some of the next steps. Next slide, please. Um, so, next slide, yeah, thank you. Um, so, um, developing, localizing SDGs um, is not without its challenges, but I think it's also, and there are different ways in which uh, different cities have gone about um, producing, localizing, um, and, and implementing. Um, and I think within cities, uh, within municipalities, um, it's really important uh, finding fertile ground, um, finding the right people, the right moment, the right entry, po entry point within cities um, to take the to, to take the work forward within organisations. Um, so, on the the graphic on the on the slide just refers to some of the work uh, within the city um, we've adopted uh, in 2019 April, uh, sort of an internal approach which is three pronged. Uh, focusing on internal strengthening, so capacity development within the organization, um, global positioning, so partnerships with international organizations, and then also, and as well as within, um, with metros in the country, and then national reporting, um, hopefully bringing more of the city's city level um, data into the VNR as we go forward. Um, in 2019, uh, September, the city also um, approved its resilience strategy. It was um, also a very deeply, uh, um, cons deeply consultative process. Uh, and so it's also uh, reflective of a, a wide range of uh, stakeholders' views uh, in the resilience strategy. And then also in uh, 2019, the mayor um, committed the city of Cape Town to a VLR. Um, a process that is being driven by the office of the mayor in New York City, uh, which was the first um, city to develop uh, a VLR and to and to present that at the UN. Uh, yeah. So our next steps uh, going forward will be that uh, preparation of that VLR for 21. Um, so just in terms of some of the sort of background work and laying the groundwork within the city, we've done. A number of different things um, around working around uh, monitoring and reporting on urban development indicators. Um, we participated in 2015 in a research project which uh, tested the very first um, iteration of SDG Goal 11, um, which then in, sort of influenced the later formulation and the final formulation of the of the goal. Um, we also um, developed um, or participated in uh, ISO 37120 process and city resilience index as part of the uh, resilience, uh, 100 resilient country, uh, cities. Um, and then at the, within the city also worked very closely with our colleagues in the IDP department around some alignment of the SDGs at program level uh, in 2018, 2019. Next slide, please. Um, so I'm going to go very uh, quickly because I see I'm rapidly running out of time. Um, so just in terms of the um, importance of SDG localization, um, apart from, so three of the things that I just want to sort of um, extract and, and point out is uh, the value for capacity development within the city uh, around um, monitoring and also just revisioning development looking more at long term longer term outcomes and and uh, and impacts i think often we um we're very focused on the immediate on short term outputs so this is a, a you know sort of a fo refocuses the mind around along those longer term outcomes um and also then it strengthens the gains um and uh, and impacts for uh, communities uh, within the city um 
Um, it also assists also with these vertical linkages. Um, we were talking some uh, some of the other um, inputs were around the importance of vertical um, collaboration across the different um, spheres of government. Um, so I've, I've talked to the slides, so let's move on. Uh, so some of the key informants for the city of Cape Town, next slide please, um, that we will anchor the development of the, VL, the VLR around uh, is the city's resilience strategy. Um, the IDP, which is now in its final year really of implementation for this term of office, uh, and then going forward with the development of the new IDP and then the, um, the IDP once it's approved for the new term of office. Um, the city is also in the process of developing uh, a COVID-19 recovery plan. It's very much in the beginning stages. The parameters are still being refined and, and, and um, agreed. Um, and implementation will, will very likely start from the end of this month. So part of the, uh, the importance of the uh, linkage to the recovery plan is the, also, also the link to um, the resilience strategy and to the SDGs uh, around building back better and leaving no one behind, is that every recovery plan decision is then also uh, an SDG decision. Um, just, this is just uh, looking at um, the IDP and in the next slide you will see um, just what the 11 transformational priorities of the IDP are, the current IDP, to which the uh, alignment um, of the SDGs will also be um, done. So in the next slide, um, this is just to show, uh, this is the resilient strategy, there are five pillars to it. Um, uh, you know, talking about a holistic, compassionate, healthy city, a connected and climate adaptive city, a capable job creating city, collective shock ready city, and a collaborative forward looking city. So this strategy has been fully aligned uh, to the SDGs and in the left or the rightmost col column, you will see the different um, SDGs, SDG goals. Um, so sorry. Um, to which it has been aligned. That was just my alarm going. Um, so just uh, going forward, there are different ways uh, in which cities have gone about uh, to, um, to uh, create a uh, VLR. Um, most, you know, some, some cities have done uh, processes that are entirely you know, located within one office, often the mayor's office, and coordinated it from there. Others, you can go to the next slide. Other cities um, have developed an internal process by coordinating across different departments. Then some have done interagency um, uh, uh, processes. And then a, a very few actually have done to date have done processes that are sort of on a partnership model that includes academia as well as um, organizations within civil society. Within Cape, the city of Cape Town, we have decided on a sort of hub and spoke arrangement where from within the policy and strategy department and the research branch specifically, we'll be coordinating but involving colleagues from other departments that are very, uh, very engaged in localizing uh, and in localizing SDGs within their programs and aligning to the SDGs. So very likely uh, we'll, we'll, well, we will have a technical task team uh, the approach has been approved um, and that structure might, you know, contain about or include about 12 persons from different directions and departments. And I think it's just important to also note here, I don't think people often get stuck on what data is available. Um, and, I, and I think Nachi earlier said to start from where you are. Uh, so it's important that you, I mean, data uh, shouldn't determine um, how you prioritize, but you know, it's, it is, it does assist the process, but it shouldn't uh, determine the priorities. So that's just something to keep in mind going forward. Um, and one of the things that, um, one of the lessons. Um, so just in terms of the institutional processes, uh, next steps, we want to bed down the localization and VLR production processes within the city. Uh, and also just refresh the alignment to the to the NDP and IUDF. 
Um, just to the earlier question, I think the IUDF is also aligned to the, um, the new urban agenda, which is definitely aligned to the SDGs. Um, just to throw that in there. Um, we need to decide what the priority focus are for the city of Cape Town in terms of the VLR production. Uh, and for this, the uh, key informants, which is the resilience strategy, the IDP and the recovery plan will, will guide us uh, on that. Um, and then we've been very busy, um, and I think my colleague uh, Jamia is on this call, and she's been leading the engagements with uh, departments around how they currently are aligning their, their existing programs to, to the SDGs. So that process will continue uh, and it will be expanded going forward. Uh, and then we need to agree on the priority targets and the indicators for the VLR production and for reporting into, um, into the process that we agreed to. So just on the question of partnerships, um, we have been lucky um, to have had several sort of engagements at the international level um, with academia as well. Um, and then internally um, through um, the, um, with other SA metros um, linking up last year, for example, at the UCLG conference and making link the links also then with ICLI Africa and, and Terminus colleagues. So, um, so all of these have sort of have assisted in refining our understanding of approaches to uh, uh, some of the um, resources available, et cetera, the frameworks available, et cetera, for the development of the VLR. Uh, and there's a lot out there that can assist um, with uh, development of VLRs at local, at local level. Uh, within the city of Cape Town, our um, uh, we'll continue with developing those internal partnerships um, and one of those is just we have to work and uh, through our international relations department as well because a lot of those international engagements come through them uh, but it's important um, going forward that we also pay attention there are um, exciting uh, programs that are transversal in nature that um, are being planned and provide um, perfect opportunities, you know, exciting opportunities for working on a program level a, a, across a range of different departments and colleagues and where the uh, embedding of the SDGs um, has, been, has been identified as important um, outcome of the process. So I'll stop there and thank you very much for the opportunity. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the questions. Thank you, Natasha, um, for being with us and for sharing uh, your insights on the very dynamic and important process that the city of Cape Town has followed. Um, I really love what you said, uh, if I may quote you, every recovery decision is an SDG decision and how correct you are in saying that um, in, in really, you know, shining a light on how COVID-19 has brought the, the need for sustainable development at the local level right to the front of our, of our agenda. So thank you for your insights. And, and on that note, I'm gonna hand over to Mr. Pravendra Kia, who's the Senior Manager for Integrated Development Planning at Etiquini Municipality. Um, and Etiquini have also been undertaking some really exciting steps on localization. Um, and, and Pravendra has a wealth of knowledge on this to share with us. So without further ado, the floor is yours, Pravendra. Thanks for being with us. Hi, Tim, can you hear me? We can oh, hear you. Go ahead. No, great stuff. Thank you. Um, yeah, good, uh, good day to all. Um, basically, I'll take you through a sort of whirlwind um, application of the SDG implementation at Itikwen. If we could move to the next slide, please. Yeah, um, this slide just basically, I wanted to say that, um, you know, from an Itikwen perspective, sustainable development is nothing new in terms of strategy itself. Uh, right from the development of the first city uh, development strategy or long-term development strategy, we were always concentrated on um, our sustainable development principles. Uh, but key to the entire discussion is the, the, the slide that actually talks about 2015 onwards, which talks about the development discourse being a sustainable development plus plus sort of model, as opposed to just being sustainable development or the green transition. 
And it's really talking about all of the global agendas coming together as one, as opposed to just focusing on, on a particular aspect of the sustainability agenda itself. If you move to the next slide, you know, the, the, the city has adopted the, uh, the sustainable development principles at a, from, from a national level, which basically says that everything actually occurs within an ecosystem, which is actually defined and confined. Uh, so whether it's a socio-political or economic activity that takes place, it takes place in a physical ecosystem, and that physical ecosystem is actually defined in terms of its carrying capacity. So whatever we do and how we govern those processes from a socio-political and economic perspective, we have to take cognizance of how that actually affects the ecosystem and sustainability itself. So this slide just basically looks at the, the alignment of the, uh, the, each of the SDGs to the pillars uh, or the sustainable uh, development spheres that we've actually defined as well. If we move forward to the next slide. Uh, I think it's interesting that we need to start with the challenges first. It's really, uh, it, it wasn't easy uh, implementing the SDGs itself. Uh, we had to consider the impact of parachuting the SDGs into municipalities. Uh, if we, we, we just drop this within, or within the actual line department itself, we would possibly kill the entire process. So we, we needed to bring it in by, uh, very, very um, succinctly, but also in a manner where we could actually get departments to buy in as well. Effectively, it was about how do we take everyone along. Um, we also needed to look at the implications or the limitations of Circular 88 as the primary uh, reporting tools within the VNR itself. Um, how do we actually uh, ensure that there's uh, political continuity, um, largely if you look at next year being a uh, election year, how do you build the, uh, the capacity and the skills and the understanding, but also the, to have the political impact to actually take forward SDG alignment as well. Also the issue of uh, credible uh, data, but disaggregated at, at a city level. How do we actually develop that? Key to actually enabling the, uh, the SDGs is having data that is actually credible at a city level. How do we bring that actually forward itself? How do we engage with the communities, but also the challenges of actively influencing the VNR? So moving to 2021, how do cities or local government actively influence that process itself? Uh, there were very limited information or implications uh, in our VNR that we presented last year. We need as local government to actually have a far greater uh, impact in the development of that VNR itself. How do we get line department buy-in? But key is also how do you create a paradigm shift that it's around sustainable development and SDGs is around sustainable development and it is not merely a climate change agenda itself. Because you look at the 17 uh, goals itself, it's transversal, and climate change plays a critical role in it, but we need to understand that there's different aspects of the SDGs itself. But also, how do we convince local government that the SDGs are not the MDGs, and the failures in some of the MDGs does not reflect what is happening in the SDGs itself. So if we move to the next slide itself, so what have we done in terms of alignment? Uh, basically, we use the bottom-up approach where we use the capital projects as the foundation. Um, each of the projects were aligned to uh, the SDG goal, the SDG target, and the SDG indicators. We use the best match principle, a one-to-one -one, uh, principle itself. Um, in 2021-22 financial year, we're looking at a multi-criteria um, approach to the alignment itself. The source documents were our sustainable, uh, sorry, our SDBIP. Uh, we use that from 2016 onwards. Um, the, the, the process of MSCOA implementation, uh, your standard chart of accounts, actually assisted us in terms of developing the analysis for, um, for benchmarking as well as for reporting itself. And we're using various analytical tools uh, to carry out queries in terms of determining alignment itself. Uh, so some of the examples, uh, we've incorporated the, the, um, the SDGs into the IDP as well as part of our strategic approach, the alignment of the SDPIP to the targets and goals. Uh, we reviewed all of our mild master classes and we focus on SDG localization itself. Um, the SDGs 
we advocate through various local government uh, networks, uh, be it at a global level as well as a national and, and regional levels as well. We've also provided uh, input into the development of the SDG toolkit uh, that was developed by UN uh, DESA and uh, UNDP, and we assisted in training uh, trainers uh, in Itikwini around SDBI, uh, sorry, around uh, SDGs itself. Next slide, please. Uh, so what we've done is we've actually taken the, uh, all of the SDG indicators and we looked at the um, schedule uh, four and five A and B of the constitution and determined what the roles and responsibilities for each of those indicators were. So the, uh, what we figured out was, or what we came up with was there were 99, uh, sorry, 98 uh, indicators that were directly responsible to local government. In 2017, uh, 60 of those indicators were, were not addressed in the municipality. 2018, we brought that down to 40. And in 2019, uh, sorry, in 2018, it was 48. And in 2019, we brought that down to uh, 40 indicators in South. So it's about how do we actually turn around the, the departments to start thinking in a more sustainable development manner and identifying projects that actually uh, achieve each of the SDG indicators itself. The next slide, please. So this just uh, quickly shows some of the analytical. So you've got the target number, the number of projects, the sum of capital, the average spend, as well as the, uh, the highest capital outlay itself. So this, these are some of the, the data and analytics that, that we've actually uh, prepared. If we move to the next slide, then we start looking at a goal per IDP and the capital spend uh, for, the, for the municipality itself. So each of the SDG goals, we align it directly to the IDP plan uh, within the municipality. The next slide. Uh, this is just showing the capital movements uh, from the 2018, 2019 and 2019, 2020 capital budgets itself the variance to see where uh, the biggest shifts are. And now we didn't do 2020, 2021 uh, budget as yet. I think we all know the, uh, the implications of COVID and that uh, which is going to happen onto municipal budgets. So we're just waiting. Probably the first, the midterm assessment would provide a better indication in terms of how we want to move from a capital budget perspective itself. Next slide, so way forward. It's really about strengthening awareness of the SDG and the new urban agenda. So whilst we looked at the SDG at the bottom up level, we're also looking at the new urban agenda from a visionary perspective coming down into the, uh, into the actual implementation via the SDGs itself. So how do we support our VNR and the SDG reporting itself? Uh, more active participation in local uh, SDG, SDG localization. Um, advocating for credible uh, city data, also the appointment of three SDG champions uh, within the, the municipality at the administration level. So we've got uh, a political champion uh, that we've also identified as well. So we're also developing an SDG best practice uh, booklet and we're also looking at moving this towards a more uh, or a fuller VLR within the city itself. Uh, just uh, very, very, very quickly, um, what we've done, or some of the work that we're currently looking at is the impact of the COVID-19 on SDG implementation. So from a perspective of um, from homelessness, uh, in the short term, there's been some positive because we're finding some uh, interim solutions for homelessness. But in the long and medium term, uh, we need to find more sustainable solutions itself. In terms of uh, diseases and, and how do we uh, combat communicable diseases, in the short term, uh, people with comorbidities are actually at high risk. But over time, uh, we can see some improvement in, in, in that as well. I'm not going to go through each of the, the actual uh, indicators itself, but just to indicate that there are some positives that actually come out of uh, the COVID crisis itself in terms of the implications to the, the SDGs itself. Uh, if we move to the next slide, so just some trend analysis that, that we're also developing uh, but targeting or, or linking back to the SDG target itself. Um, you would see I steered away from the, uh, the normal service delivery uh, related indicators because I think we all have that, uh, that on hand. But just to give you an indication from 2016, 2017, we got a benchmark 
And then we've got some data that actually looks at the improvement itself in terms of each of the indicators. The next slide, basically some of the tools that we're developing internally to, to ensure that we communicate the, the intention or the intent of the, uh, of the SDGs to a varied audience. But this is really targeting at a, a sort of future leader school, uh, school going kid uh, as to how to uh, achieve sustainability itself. Uh, my last slide, uh, basically it's gonna be my contact details. Um, and yeah, uh, feel free to, to, to engage. I must apologize in a um, seven minute uh, slot. It's difficult to get through all of the processes and procedures, uh, but I'll be glad to engage with anyone uh, moving forward. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Prabhendra, for being with us and, and yeah, for sharing such rich insights within the seven minute limit. Um, so I think it's certainly a very inspiring um, uh, work that, that Etiquini is doing. Um, that certainly has many insights that you've shared that are applicable elsewhere uh, to inspire all those on the call. So we're going to quickly take um, a few uh, questions. I've, I've gathered a few from the chat box um, if there aren't any live. So if anyone would like to ask a question live to our previous two speakers, please kindly raise your hand using the panel on the right. Um, otherwise, I will, I will try and group together some of the questions that we've been receiving through the very active question and answer and chat boxes. So if there's anyone with a question, you're welcome to raise your hand and unmute yourself now. Okay, we have a, a hand, Ernest. Um, Ernest, uh, the floor is yours. If you, you are welcome to, to go ahead. And, and... All right. Ernest, I'm sorry, I think you are muted at the moment. I have to unmute. Is it yeah, unmuted? Yes. All right. Loud and clear. Yeah. yeah. What I need to find out is that now um, we've got your IDP and we've got your SDGs. Now, how do we actually make sure that there is buy-in to, the um, to the SDGs and actually linking them to the IDPs? Because what I've actually discovered as a challenge is that most of the time civil society needs tend not to actually be captured into most of our development models and as a result there is never any buy-in either from uh, civil society nor do we actually get any buy-in from government in terms of satisfying the needs that are on the ground we should actually align the sdgs and the idps together to make sure that we actually have a fully fleshed picture that is actually evolving at a sustainable level thank you Great. Ernest, that's a fantastic question and thank you for bringing it up because it's very aligned to many of the other questions in the chat. And I wonder if Prevendra or Natasha would like to give a go um, around, uh, around this question of alignment with the IDP. We know that often the IDP itself is not perfectly aligned to community priorities. So how, in your experience, has, has this played out in your different contexts? Okay, Tim, uh, I'm going to go first. Thank you. Um, the, the one thing that we got to understand is that from an Itikwini perspective, as I indicated earlier, you know, sustainable development is actually not a new concept in terms of our strategy itself. So we've aligned uh, the SDGs directly to the IDP programs itself. And the, the, the paradigm shift that we're trying to, uh, to, to create with our line departments is that there's more to actually achieve uh, in terms of sustainable development. So therefore, we've, we've listed those indicators, those 60. So when we engage with the department um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we, we, we start to create the paradigm shift that, listen, what more can you actually do to actually achieve the SDGs itself? Now, when we take that process to the public in terms of our public participation processes uh, and community-driven processes itself, we start to create that link and create that narrative that sustainable development is everybody's um, objective in terms of, of, of city strategy itself. And everybody plays an active role in it. So uh, some of the information in terms of the, the, the cartoons that we've created as well is to start to make uh, communities aware that every little action that they have or they actually do yeah. achieves an aspect of sustainable development itself. Thank you. 
Thanks, Pavendra. Um, Natasha, I wonder if I could call on you for a slightly different question. There's one that's raised very highly in the Q&A um, around how do SDGs support uh, by speeding up the implementation of programs that are already in place? Speaking to this idea of, you know, the connection between localization and immediacy. <coughs> Natasha, are you there? Are you yeah, there? yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> get all the click all the right buttons um, so speeding up um, well I, I, I'm not sure I mean it, it's speeding up in, in terms of uh, sort of refocusing on the quality of outcomes um, so I don't think it's so much in terms of time spent in as in terms of uh, what the goal that you are um, trying to reach um, so one of, I mean, a lot of the engagement with, with departments is um, around often the, um, the preoccupation is with, uh, with output. So, so many activities done, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and part of the narrative around the SDGs is um, how do you reframe the programs um, so that the quality of the outcomes are uh, sort of more long term and deeper and um, and around uh, you know for, for us we use both the resilience framework as well as sustainable development so so that you have substantive outcomes um, that that um, serve people in the long term right rather than you know um, look I think there isn't a, a clear cut difference because, you know, delivery of a house enables, for example, a range of other development outcomes. So at some level, you know, it, the, you start with outputs, but what does the output also enable in the long term? Um, so if I can answer your question in that way. Um, great. Yeah. Um, great. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to move us on. Um, and if we can have the next slide. Um, thank you to everyone who's asked questions. The, the panelists will continue to answer in the Q&A session and we will have a final Q&A session time permitting. Mm -hmm. um, but we're gonna do a quick live poll, uh, if Sonia can pull it up. So which SDGs does your work contribute most directly to achieving? And you'll see the, the option at the bottom, we've grouped them in twos, um, but the option at the bottom is all of them. If, if you, if you feel your work addresses them all. So we'll just take a few seconds um, to vote on this. Um, there's no right or wrong answer here at all. Um, we just, it's interesting to get a perspective on, on what uh, our work is, is focused on. So I'll just give it a few more seconds. Thanks, Sonia, you can share the results with us. Um, I won't dwell too, too much on these results. Um, it's really interesting to see that 44% uh, responded to say that their work was, uh, you know, uh, contributes directly to many or all of the SDGs. Um, I'm noticing that goal 11 on sustainable cities is also coming into focus. Um, and so that's, that's really uh, great to see, especially for local governments. So if you move us to the next slide, Sonia. Um, I would like to take this opportunity. We've heard from two metropolitan municipalities in South Africa, and we're gonna shift our focus now um, to uh, the intermediary city and what localization means in this context. So it's my pleasure to welcome Ms. Sharon Gabinder, the project manager for environmental planning at the city of Umtla Tuzi. Um, and thank you for being with us, Sharon, and the floor is yours. Uh Thank you very much, Tim, and uh, good day to uh, the participants. It is indeed an honor to share this very diverse um, platform um, with you all. Um, I will be sharing our SDG localization journey and um, I'll, I'll, I'll rely on the panelists to give a distinction between metros and, and intermediary or secondary cities in South Africa, because there is that distinction. And for the city of Mshatuze, it was imperative that we start to take this 
uh, overarching global framework and um, contextualize it so it reflects um, our local needs. Um, and this is where we will actually start. So, um, the city of Mflatuze. Um, the city of Mflatuze is an intermediary city along the northeastern uh, shores of Natal. Yeah. Um, and we are in many ways a gateway to world uh, markets. Okay, so and this is achieved through our port. Um, and, and manufacturing industries. Um, but on the other hand, we have unparalleled um, natural uh, assets which are sensitive to, to change and which we uh, spend considerable resources trying to manage, okay? Um, on the socioeconomic front, like with many cities in South Africa, we live amongst po pockets of poverty, which um, our various policy instruments um, need to somehow address. Um, we'll move on to the next slide, um, where we start to understand, unpack why uh, the SDGs are so important for secondary cities like ourselves to, uh, to address. Now, firstly, I think it's worth noting that we have just under a decade left to, um, to act. And so now should be, um, we should be giving more urgency um, now more than ever before to act on these. For local governments, the SDGs serve purposefully in uh, addressing the triple bottom line of poverty, unemployment, inequality. Um, and, and that framework can easily be repurposed um, towards the SDGs. Now, drawing onto our contextual background, we are strategically and geographically poised to um, uh, I'll offer an alternative to metropolitan uh, municipalities to achieve a range of growth imperatives, which in turn um, could align to the SDGs. Um, but with that, having mentioned the a range of growth imperatives that, 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 that we have in our armor, um, there needs to be this resilience logic okay, where we need to balance um, the, the ecological imperatives and which we found provides a useful feedback loop in addressing some of the other SDGs, okay. Um, we've tried to unpack that into strategic objectives and corresponding SDGs, as you've seen on that slide, but I'll move on to discuss the next slide where we start to now reflect on our localization journey and we're quite new to the scene. Um, we too um, have used, like the, the, the Eteguini municipality, we've used a bottom-up approach, bottom-up from that sense that we've um, repurposed some of our functional roles um, that both from a human resource point of view and from a financial, uh, a budgetary point of view. So we didn't uh, need any additional um, roles created. We've simply repackaged and repurposed what we, um, what exists. Um, it was very um, useful to work within our existing programs. And specifically for us, we uh, used our climate change work and uh, specifically our urban low emissions development strategies, which um, deals with one of its levers, deals with multi-level governance. And so we've used that program to, um, to build capacity amongst municipal departments on, on localizing the SDGs, okay? So we held a dedicated uh, workshop. 
It was a wonderful participatory, practical, a very stimulating uh, two-day session. And we brought on board um, our social partners, ECLI, uh, the GIZ, um, and we brought about a multi-level governance theme to it. So we, we brought in local and provincial governments to address um, uh, a few themes in the workshop. Uh, but an important take-home lesson from, from that was that and which we emphasize throughout the, the, the workshop was that we are not uh, implementing the SDGs. Like Nachi reflected, we are just merely um, implementing the um, or programs that advance the outcomes of the SDGs. Um, if I could move on to the next slide, please. Um, we've um, we felt that the institutionalizing process is an important one. And there too, we've decided to um, draw on various policy instruments uh, and frameworks. But what we've, um, I thought for the purpose of today, we've decided to link some of our useful demonstration work and demonstration revolve or involving civil society uh, partnerships, of course, which we um, contribute to in, in, in some ways. But we've started to bring in civil society partnerships. And uh, an example would be um, organic farming within a vulnerable community within the municipality which has served very purposefully even during this COVID period where, um, where food security uh, has issues have come to the fore. So what this project has done is that it's demonstrating climate resilience in using organic waste um, and, and it's also created or, or lends itself to, in many ways to um, uh, resilience urban development. We've uh, managed to link that back to what we've developed in the workshop um, out of certain response, uh, responses and so we are actually therefore um, giving, uh, 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 demo we're demonstrating certain actions that we are delivering on. Uh, next slide please. Um, and I think it's important to equally reflect on um, key lessons. And for us, it was um, not to assume that everybody within um, the the within line function uh, within line functions know what the SDGs are. So we started at a very elementary level to um, to unpack the SDGs. Um, and, and I've spoke a bit about the dedicated uh, workshop that we've had. It, 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 you know, it, it goes a long way to take the colleagues away from the working environment and, and, and to focus on, you know, um, a, 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 a very um, a, a renewed topic, you know, apart from being drawn into, you know, day-to-day -day activities. So we felt that, you know, th that um, a workshop was uh, an important uh, uh, step to start. Um, and for us, we found it very useful to have dedicated themes. And within, in, for our workshop, we had, for example, urban safety being uh, a theme which, in fact, we are implementing right now and reporting. Um, uh, we've brought on board uh, partners in that regard. Um, it was also important to um, ensure that we have uh, indicators and those indicators speak to the municipal context, okay? Um, and, and to maybe there to, to reflect that 
a good place to start is in fact the SDF, the IDP, and many other guiding plans. But equally important is to set measurable targets and prioritizing some of these um, goals. Um, so, uh, Puvendra mentioned the issue of data. We found that it was very important to start thinking about your data sources. And then perhaps maybe to round up, um, you know, the institutionalizing process is imperative. So to link it back and to close the loop with some of our um, ID, uh, to some of our uh, key documents that we, that, that, that we have to report on. Um, yeah, and I'd leave it there, colleagues, but I'm hoping to pick up the discussion in the question and answer segment. Great. Thank you, Sharon. And we really appreciate you being with us today and sharing insights um, on, on your localization journey in Umkhetuzi. And we are so privileged to have been a small part of that process. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's really lovely to have the perspective of a, an intermediary city um, to show the nuances and the differences, um, you know, of the different sizes of cities and, and to show that uh, you know, that localization is for everyone. So thank you for being with us. Without further ado, I know we are, are getting close to our time, but we have a fantastic final speaker um, who I am sure will uh, bring some energy back um, and, uh, and share some really valuable insights. It's here that we're going to start moving to, uh, you know, looking at the, the whole of society approach. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Sylvia Krauser, Research Associate with the African Center for Cities at the University of Cape Town and Senior Researcher at the School of Architecture and Planning at the University of, of Wits. Um, so, Sylvia, thank you for being with us and the floor is yours. Over to you for your insights. Hello, everyone. I uh, hope you can hear me. Uh, it's been also a pleasure uh, listening to all the colleagues who have spoken so far. And I, I know that we've gone a bit over time, so I will try to keep it uh, rather short. And I think a lot of what I will say will build and will build on and will touch on some of the things that have been said uh, before. Uh, as Natasha Primo mentioned earlier in the presentation on uh, the city of Cape Town, uh, the city of Cape Town worked with an embedded researcher uh, when working on preparing for its uh, plan for, for the implementation of the SDG within the city. Uh, and I was actually that embedded researcher that worked with the city of Cape Town between 2017 and 2019. Um, and that was part of a comparative research project that um, brought together uh, both uh, the city of Cape Town, the Kenyan city of Kisumu, and the uh, two cities in Sweden, a city in the UK, uh, the Argentinian capital of Buenos Aires and an Indian city called Shimla, representing kind of a, a, a broad sweep of larger and smaller cities. Um, and as part of that comparative project, we looked at the ways in which these cities were implementing the SDGs or preparing for the implementation of the SDGs. And we realized that there were a number of challenges involved in that. And a number of these challenges have been spoken about before. Um, and what is very important, and I think it's important that that has been touched on, um, is the internal process and that you need to get city officials on board and you need to build awareness and you need to uh, build capacity and simply just communicate and share what these SDGs are and how the city can actually engage uh, with them. But there's a number of other challenges that are involved when actually starting to try to localize the SDGs at the city level. And these range also from very practical issues around the uh, delimitation of the urban boundary that sometimes the administrative, administrative boundary may not align with the functional or built up uh, um, boundary of the, of the city. Uh, and this is especially a challenge when you're trying to plan longer in time uh, towards the future. And do you plan for the way that the city is now or for the, what it will look like uh, in 2030? There's issues around mandates, institutional silos, uh, mandates that are spread over or out between the local, the provincial, and the national level. Uh, how to actually involve all, of, involve all of these spheres of governance, involve non-governmental actors, 
uh, how do you find synergies between existing local plans uh, and the global agendas? And there's so many of them. And it's actually quite overwhelming to try to deal with that. Um, so we wrote up some of the, the findings, these initial findings, uh, and I think the link to that paper will be shared in the chat box. Um, and what we found that in spite of all, or some ways to overcome some of these challenges are really, is the, really the need for an enabling environment. Uh, and the need to have sufficient capacity, uh, both technical, financial, in terms of resources and a mandate at the local level to effectively, effectively deal with SDG localization at the city level. Uh, and the need for multi-level governance mechanisms to, to foster the kind of dialogue and exchange of information and knowledge and partnerships that you need to um, do that effectively and this is actually what the whole of government and whole of society approach is about it's actually to build that enabling environment that allows for uh for these kind of uh collaborations across scales um so if we go to the next slide um we'll see there that in order to enable this kind of whole of government or society approach the issue of leadership is something that should not be underestimated and if we look at uh, the way in which the SDGs have been localized within South Africa, further across the continent and even globally, there's kind of two tendencies that you see. You either see a very strong top-down approach where at the highest level of the national government, be it at the level of the presidency or a particular ministry within the central government, there is an idea of how the SDGs should be um, implemented uh, and guidelines are kind of cascaded down from the top uh, level to the to the bottom uh, and in a way uh, this can be useful because um, uh, this creates an enabling and an institutional framework for SDG localization on the other hand we see bottom-up initiatives and uh, and I think in the case of South Africa the three cities that we heard about uh, today represent very important examples of what that looks like of that kind of bottom-up engagement where cities actually start trying to figure it out themselves, how to go about SDG localization. But what we find is actually, ideally, you need something in between because the two cannot exist without each other. You need, on the one hand, some kind of framework that is established from the, from the national level and that then complemented from the, from the local level and then somewhere in the middle they meet. Um, and in a lot of the conversations around the current pandemic and COVID-19, and it's been alluded to by some of the speakers so far, there's this idea that, okay, once we've now, we've overcome the pandemic, there's this need to build back better. I think Natasha Primo also said it. Um, but the other day someone was saying to me, it's actually not about building back better. It's about building back differently on what is there. Um, so what is there that we have, because building back better suggests that we should do more of perhaps what was there already. And of course, the pandemic has shown that there's a need to do things differently because the way we've been doing things haven't been very effective. And two specific things have stood out in the response to COVID-19 that I think are very important to keep in mind going forward. And that is on the one hand, the role of society, science, the role of knowledge, the role of data in guiding the kind of decisions that need to be made, whether it's now in responding to COVID-19, but the same can be said in terms of uh, the SDGs and the role of society. And society there can be civil society, private sector, academia, or simply ordinary citizens. And we've seen in a lot of the countries that have been effective in responding to COVID-19, both science and society have played a crucial role. When we transpose that to the SDG, civil society, uh, the, that role can also be played and a very important role is for organizations such as ICLE, city networks, uh, local government associations that can play an important role in enabling conversations and, uh, and exchanges between cities. Uh, the private sector, of course, plays a very important role as well in terms of uh, um, enabling um, partnerships, finance, implementations, even data, uh, and academia. I mentioned my role as an embedded researcher in the city of Cape Town. And we see a lot of examples now of um, uh, uh, citizen science, where citizens generate data that can inform uh, SDG implementation. And what I just want to highlight here um, is that this kind of whole of government, whether it's whole of government, whole of society approach, 
can be can be applied to three the three dimensions uh, of, of SDG localization. And uh, in the beginning, Nachi spoke about on the one hand the reporting and the and the monitoring and, and mainstreaming. Um, and but implementation, of course, is, is an important dimension as well. And this whole of government and society, there's a place for that in all of these three stages of SDG localization. So I thought that would be important to point out. So I'll finish off with a number of final uh, examples on the next slide. Uh, and these are just some examples of my own work and that I've seen uh, uh, in other contexts as, as uh, being helpful in this process, process of creating an environment for whole of government or society um, uh, um, approaches. And that is in the first place, the creation of spaces for SDG knowledge exchange and production. Um, We've seen, and especially in the case of South Africa, but this is uh, this can be seen in other places as well, is that often there's not a lack actually of efforts to uh, engage with the SDGs, but that there are sometimes not spaces where these efforts can come together or be shared. Um, so over the course of last year, 2019, I worked on creating a, a, a series of seminars that functions as, as spaces for SDG knowledge exchange and production. And I think in the chat box, some of the links to, to some of those seminars will be shared. And these brought together stakeholders from society, civil society, private sector, different levels of government, uh, as well as academics. Um, and they provided a very important space for people to connect, to, to share ideas uh, and experiences. Uh, champions, and I think the city of Etiquini is a very good example in terms of realizing the importance of both identifying and supporting champions. So knowing that there are people um, that, that, that are central uh, in, in these SDGs uh, localizations efforts to be to actually to land and to be taken forward. And there's such a need to, to support these people because they're really key um, uh, uh, to, to these efforts. And then the importance of sharing good practices, building communities of practice, uh, the community of practice that is now emerging around uh, the voluntary local reviews is a very important example of that. Uh, and UCLG has played an important role in supporting that. Uh, um, I think a, a link to some of that work and the guidelines that have been developed as part of that work will also be shared in the, uh, in the chat box. Then the final thing I want to say, because we've spoken a couple of times about the VNR uh, and the VLR, and I think it's very important to note there that those should not be seen as products or kind of end products that will be produced for reporting purposes and to be sent to the UN, but that they are as much as important as processes and that these are very important opportunities to actually exercise that whole of government uh, and society approach. So I think going forward, it would be very important both for uh, cities and national governments um, uh, uh, across the world to make use of the, of the opportunity when working on the production of these reviews and reports to really engage all of the different stakeholders uh, um, uh, to creating them and to see that as an ongoing process. Um, and one example that can be used, and a number of countries have used open data platforms uh, as a way to, to build a kind of ongoing process where data is not just uh, produced for reporting purposes, but as an ongoing process to which anyone can contribute. So there's, for instance, the Open SDG portal uh, and um, the cities of LA and Bristol have been very, uh, are very interesting examples to see at how they have built these platforms, how they have used citizen generated data, how they have used uh, uh, partnerships with academia uh, to modify, to adjust, to localize the SDGs to their own city context. But in Africa, we also see the countries of Rwanda, Ghana, and Sierra Leone, who are working on building these platforms as a platform for continued sharing and learning. Um, and I think that is really, those are really important examples that show how the, these approaches, how a whole of society and government approach uh, can be put into practice. So I'm happy to take any questions uh, after this. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much, Sylvia, for sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. Um, I know that you've already been answering many questions in the chat box, 
Um, unfortunately, we are running out of time. Um, so uh, I kindly ask that if anyone has a burning question, please to make use of the chat and Q&A boxes. Um, if your question is in those boxes, we will uh, endeavor to respond to them in a follow-up email that we will send to all participants along with the recording and the presentations um, and on permission of the speakers, share the contact details of the speakers to take these many discussions further. I think we've had an, sorry, I think we've had an unprecedented amount of questions and engagement in the Q&A and chat boxes, which has been wonderful to see. Um, and we are so encouraged by that and the level of engagement. Um, and we're gonna do a quick uh, final live poll. Um, so Sonia, if you can pull it up, I'm only gonna spend about 10 seconds on this. So if everyone can get ready to vote, we are looking at has the webinar been useful for you and have you learned something new that you can now apply in your work? So please kindly vote on your screen. Okay, I think we can, we can close it. Uh, there are the results. Um, it's wonderful to see that most, uh, most participants feel the webinar has been very useful and have learned a lot. Um, and uh, a few 24% say the webinar was useful. Um, I'm slightly concerned about the 2% who said it was not useful for their work, but I hope that there's been some insights that uh, have at least inspired or encouraged you. Um, uh, or, 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 yeah, that, that you have uh, noted today that are, are relevant. So uh, with that, if we can move to the next slide, I want to quickly highlight the roadmap to Rise Africa in 2021. Uh, this is the overall webinar series um, that uh, this webinar forms part of. Uh, and we encourage you to join the movement and be part of this very exciting and dynamic process uh, the website link is on your screen now, and we will also share it in the chat box. Um, and we encourage you to check out future things that are happening on that front. If we can move to the next slide, one uh, webinar that I would specifically like to highlight is the second one in the series uh, of discussions we've started today. Uh, on the 1st of September, at the very same time, uh, we will be looking at, uh, at sharing some insights on the voices of African cities and the localization of the SDGs. So today we did a, a bit of a deep dive into the South African example and, and insights and lessons. Um, but on the 1st of September, we will be hearing more broadly um, from colleagues on the African continent and we encourage you to join that. The link to join to register is in the chat box now. Um, and you can also find it on the ECLI Africa website, which is also being shared with you now, or the Roadmap to Rise. And we encourage you to be a part of continuing this important conversation around localizing the SDGs. So if we can move to the next slide. Um, I want to just take this opportunity to uh, thank everybody who has attended today and participated. Thank you for your questions and for your insights. And, and for the really rich discussion and engagement that has taken place. It's been an absolute pleasure to moderate the webinar. And before I hand over to Kobi for some closing remarks, I want to just give a special thank you to our panel of speakers. Um, each of you have uh, yeah, played a, a really key role in, in making this work a reality in South Africa. Uh, and we appreciate your efforts in front running and leading this work in, our, in, in the country. Um, and for being with us today and sharing your insights. Um, so a huge thank you to you all. And on that note, um, I would like to thank everybody who has attended and hand over to Kobi just to close the webinar for us. So Kobi, thank you for being with us and over to you. Thank you, thank you very much, Tim. And again, thank you to everybody who participated and also those who tuned in. Uh, we had a very high number of people attending and it just shows us that um, there is an understanding and a need for the uh, localization of the SDGs and it's possible and it's happening. And how, what wonderful examples we still saw from South Africa and also heard about from other parts of the world. So let's just remind ourselves that the decade we're entering in now is the last 10 years of the SDGs. So it's a decade of implementation 
uh, called out by the UN. So that means that there is a realization that localization needs to happen to achieve this. It's at the local level, it's in our towns and in our cities that sustainability is going to be achieved or not. So it's up to people like us, our networks, but also mostly our cities, people like you in our cities, our leaders, our technical people working away day by day, um, really a pioneering and innovating as you're going along because there isn't one size fits all. All the answers aren't there. We can't wait for that to start acting and we need to act and we need to act together and fast. Building back better, fantastic opportunity provided through this very tragic and ongoing pandemic that we're all facing and living through. But let's not make the mistakes. Let's learn from this and let's be stronger together and in a more global world connected city by city we can achieve sustainability and we can localize the sdgs we have to in the 10 years ahead thank you very much tim thank you very much to everybody who participated and we hope to see you next tuesday for our next webinar and yes as tim said also for follow-up on on this specific webinar in September again as well. So thank you very much for joining and please reach to us if we can do any further work with you on the localization of SDGs. We'd love to do that. Thank you. And with this, I think we close the webinar. And I, I would say thank you very much to the Iki Africa team who put this together, Tim and team. There are a couple of people in the back who are also working very hard to make this possible. Well done once again to you. And to our speakers, thank you so much. It was great to see you. I haven't seen you for a while, so it was great to see you. Um, even if it wasn't face to face, it feels like family. Uh, these webinars do bring us together and have a wonderful day. Please keep safe, take care, and remember the basics of the pandemic. We can get through this and we will. Thank you and goodbye.